Good morning and welcome to Worship at Grace this Sunday, November 29th. We give special thanks this morning for Kurt and Sharon Johnsrand and who are sponsoring our online and radio broadcast today in honor of Erica Johnsrand's baptismal anniversary. Um, some other announcements for this morning. We are online. Hopefully you know that since you're tuning in, uh, either on online or on the radio, and we've moved to 9 a.m. for this next season due to the rising number of COVID cases in our community. The decision was made by our Grace and Providence Valley leadership, and we'll have no in-person worship at either church until further notice. As an additional offering this Advent season, though we will have a midweek meditation that will also be online, each Wednesday this month we'll gather for a time of expectation, preparation, anticipation, and gratitude with me. And we'll be using the music of Marty Haugen's Holden Evening Prayer and word from, words from Tish Oxenrider's new book, Shadow and Light, A Journey into Advent, to guide our way. The midweek meditations will be posted each Wednesday to the Grace Lutheran website and Facebook page. Another announcement is for Christmas poinsettias. We always love to decorate our worship space for the Christmas season, and this year uh, poinsettias cost $25, and proceeds will be going to support our youth as they head off to the National Youth Gathering next summer in Minneapolis. The poinsettia plants can be ordered online at gracedawson.org or by calling the church office, and they can be picked up after church at church after the last Christmas service. So thank you for all those orders. We really do enjoy having those plants in our sanctuary during this time of year. And my final announcement this morning is about Grace's Gifts for Kids. We've been collecting donations, monetary donations, to purchase gifts for Dawson area families in need. And we'll be accepting donations until December 1st, so that's this coming Tuesday. And don your donations can will, should be dropped off at this point um, in the church office, or you can also give online and designate that gift at gracedawson.org. So please also contact the church office if you know of a family in need. We are still seeking a few names and contact information for some families that we can bless this season with our donations. And that is it for our announcements this morning. At this time, I ask you to prepare your hearts and minds for worship as we begin this morning with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who comes to wake us from sleep, who leads us to the light of grace. Amen. Let us prepare the way of the Lord by confessing our sin against God and our neighbors. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive to sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O oh God. Wake us up and turn us from our sins. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, Hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free. Free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's peace and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with our Advent song, Christ Be Our Light. Oh, 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we make our preparations in this Advent season, we light the candles in our Advent wreath, one each Sunday of Advent worship. As we light the candles in anticipation of Christ's birth and Christmas, we do so reflecting on familiar Christmas carols to discover its biblical background and to apply its message to our lives. This morning, we light the first Advent candle on our Advent wreath. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family to bring us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. So we praise God for his glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave us our sins. He has showered us with his kindness along with all the wisdom and understanding. God has now revealed to us his mysterious will regarding Christ which is to fulfill his good plan 
And this is the plan. At the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ, everything in heaven and on earth. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. The manger looks like the beginning of the story of Jesus Christ, but it isn't. The story of our, our salvation goes back even beyond the beginning of history, beyond the creation of the world, the internal plan of God, and to the Son of God, who was there before the beginning, and who came when the time was right to make possible a new beginning for all who believe in him. Likewise, the cross looks like the end of the story for Jesus Christ, but it isn't. Risen from the dead, he lives and reigns eternally. And because he died and rose for us, our story does not end at death, but finds its ultimate end, its goal, in him. The story of our salvation, therefore, is bigger than Christmas, even bigger than Christmas and Good Friday and Easter all combined. It is a story that finds its beginning before the beginning of anything else, a story that finds its source and its conclusion in this Jesus who once entered into our time to be born as one of us and for our sake, to die as we do and on our behalf, and to be raised as we shall be raised, the ever-living Christ. We now together in our homes light the first candle of our Advent wreaths. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, from first to last, you are the giver of life and you are the object of our praise and the light of our lives. We thank you for this Advent wreath that marks our days of preparation for Christ's Advent. As we light the candle on the wreath, rouse us sleep that we may be ready to greet our Lord when he comes with all the saints and angels. Enlighten our homes with your presence and prepare our hearts to welcome him with great joy. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. Hi, I'm Hannah Selter and I will be reading the lessons for you this morning. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 64, verses one through nine. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence as when fire kindles, kindles brushwood and the fires cause water to boil to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might trouble, tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds, that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned, because you hid yourself, because you hid yourself we transgressed. We have all become like no one who is, who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and in our in inequities, like the wind, take us away. There is, there is no one who calls you on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us, and we have delivered us into the hand of our in inequity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hands. Do not, exceeding, do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember inequity forever. Now consider we are all your people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Psalms chapter 80, 
verses 1 through 7 and 17 through 19. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who led Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. O Lord, o Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in, the, in full measure. You make us you make us the scorn of our neighbors. Our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let us let your face shine that we may be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel this morning, this first Sunday in Advent, is taken from the Gospel of Mark, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and he puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Well, we barely have stepped away from the Thanksgiving table, and suddenly it is Advent, the season for our preparation for Christmas. And that season begins today. So, our passage this morning, as you heard these words of Jesus, really emphasizes for us to keep awake. It warns us to keep awake so as to not miss what's ahead of us. Great things will happen, glory will come, and we certainly do not want to miss out on it. And this theme of sleeping occurs again and again throughout scriptures, but especially in the Jesus stories. Think of all the instances when Jesus is praying in Gethsemane, the disciples fall asleep waiting for him to finish, and in Jesus' parables that he tells, he, he tells about these bridesmaids that fall asleep in the night and half aren't ready when the bridegroom shows up. So, Sleep in scriptures always seems to be a negative thing, which doesn't bode well for me because I love to sleep. It's like in those moments when your kid doesn't want to go to bed and you just want to grab them by the shoulders and, and say, that, say to them, do you know what I would do for a chance to go to sleep right now? But these mentions of literal sleep in Holy Scripture are just the tip of the iceberg for Jesus because all of these instances of physical sleep are all just pointing to the many and various ways that the disciples, that you 
and me are spiritually asleep or emotionally asleep or mentally asleep when it comes to seeing God at work in the world. I mean, it's like Jesus throughout his ministry is saying to his disciples, keep awake to the work of God among you because it's easy to miss that work. It's easy to miss that God is present, that God is behind the scenes motivating, God is behind the scenes encouraging, God is behind the scenes always moving. Because in the darkness, it's so easy to miss that work. And so that's part of the strong language that Jesus uses here. And, and Jesus is quoting really just from the Hebrew prophets. He's borrowing words from other places of Holy Scripture. The words of the prophet Daniel, the words of the prophet Joel, the words of the prophet Isaiah. And so the strong language that Jesus uses here is meant to kind of wake the disciples up, to wake you up, to wake me up, to wake each of us up to wake us up to the fact that God will come and that God is actively approaching and has already arrived on the scene in this world. But so often we, we miss that because we're, well, we're sleepwalking. So I like this time of year. In fact, I love this time of year where we set up trees in our homes and just driving around town, I, I see that so many of you have already put up your Christmas trees in your homes and we've done it here in church as well. Lights are already up. Christmas decorations are already out because there's something about this year Something especially about this year that has engaged us to move into Christmas early. And don't get me wrong, I love as much as anyone turning the lights on to look at the Christmas tree or staring at a fire or lighting candles. I like the idea that we light candles and we string up lights outside so that even the darkest parts of the night shine out. I think that's all about keeping and staying awake that Jesus encourages us in this morning. So we need to stay awake, especially this year. So in that spirit of staying awake, I just thought we would play a little game together, thinking about our preparation for Christmas using the season of Advent to do such that, and then to use some songs, because there are so many great songs of this season. So the game is it is this. I will play part of a Christmas carol, and then you will get to sing along with your family or, or by yourself, whoever you're with, um, and just see if you can guess the second part of the song. So I'll play the first part of the song, and then I'll have you complete the song or I'll have you continue the lyrics. So after the one I share, then you'll continue to sing. So to begin, we'll start out uh, kind of easy. So are you ready? All right, here we go. I'll play the first part of the lyric and then you'll sing the last part of the lyric. Here we go. Here's the first one. Here comes Santa Claus, here comes Santa Claus. All right, how did you, how'd you do? Right down Santa Claus Lane, right? Vixen and Blitzen and all his reindeer pulling up the reins. All right, excellent, great, great job. All right, here's, here's another one. Sleigh bells ring, are you listening? In the lane, snow's glistening. Okay, how did you do it? A beautiful sight. We're happy tonight walking in the winter wonderland. Well, a wonderful choir you are. One more. Now, this one may be a little 
uh, more difficult for you. Here we go. So this is Christmas. And what have you done? All right, did you get that one? Another year over and a new one just begun. So yes, these are all songs of Christmas, songs that are in my head this time of year, and, and now they're in your head. So uh, we hum them and we sing them in the shower, and they are pretty cheery songs for the most part. I mean, John Lennon was never accused of being an optimist, but by and large, these are all happy songs. But let's, just for a moment, reorient ourselves with these morning texts in mind. You know, one of the cool things about this text this morning is that Jesus hauls the cosmos into it. The sun is darkened, the moon won't shine, and the stars fall. That's where he's quoting the Hebrew prophets here. But one thing we miss with our modern eyes, because we're looking and maybe not awake to this, is that these celestial bodies in ancient days were often thought of as gods and governors themselves. And so Jesus is saying that when everything falls apart, even those stable and staple things that you've relied on all the time, the things like the sun, those things, even when they pass away. My word, Jesus says, my presence, Jesus says, will not pass away. So this very idea is that even in the darkness, even in the shadows, where it doesn't seem like the light of the world is shining, God is still there, even perhaps most especially there, like a mystery in the darkness. So don't fall asleep and certainly don't get distracted. Look for the hidden God behind it all, because this year is so different than years past. This year is a year that all of the parties that we had planned needed to be canceled. Our regular work days in the office were changed. Even going to church each, each Sunday changed for many of us. And shopping for groceries and visiting with friends and neighbors that we used to when we were out and about to, to be with them, you know, picking up kids from school and from their activities and hugging people, that part of our life is, is gone. Every single one of these elements of a normal life have been disrupted and destroyed and turned on its head this year. The world we live in now is dark and is strange and is scary. We miss passing the peace with a handshake and saying hello with a hug in church. And we miss hearing the choir sing together and joining our voices in song together. But something that I just realized that I also have missed is the laughter. Even when we were gathered together with our masks on in worship, the laughter just wasn't quite the same. Laughter doesn't quite work under a mask or across a virtual connection. It's, it's one of those embodied things you sort of have to just be there. And of course, now it feels like one of those dangerous things, like singing, or like shaking hands, or like hugging. I mean, you wouldn't dare to laugh when we can't do any of these things, not when the world has gotten so deadly serious. Not now. 
with daily case numbers spiking all over our nation and right here in our backyards. We are, in fact, entering the worst season yet of what this COVID really means. Nothing about this death is funny, and it is as if new life might never come again. We don't know what the future will hold or how long this season of upheaval and uncertainty will last, which is why it has never been more important that we remain grounded and awake in our faith. And to come here and to be together in our worship life, knowing that others in our community and family and faith are together here in this space, here also in Christ, to come together and to hear week after week to worship, to light a candle and to add to the flame of that light, reminding us to stay awake in these days of long nights and to pray with our children and to read scripture to our children and to teach them the stories of the faith so that they too might remain awake in their faith. Even in the deep depressions of our lives and the troubling and the troubled times in our lives to let Advent remind us that even in these times of darkness in our lives when it feels like everything is falling apart, like the sun isn't going to shine, like the stars in our eyes have gone, like we're lost in the middle of a wilderness journey with no map, that even then, and most especially then, God is present and God is active and God is working. So we light a candle to help brighten the room to enlighten the moment and to remind the parts of ourselves not asleep at the wheel that the promises of God do not pass away. That the promises of God that say, I love you and you are mine. The promises of God that say, when you pass through the waters, they shall not overwhelm you. The promises of God that say, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. The promises of God that ring especially true in this season that say, unto you a child is born, unto you a son is given, and the government will cause him trouble, but he will be a wonderful counselor, a mighty one, everlasting authority, the Prince of Peace. We need to sing these promises. So I'm going to do just that. I'm going to sing. And I'm going to sing songs like White Christmas. And I'm going to watch National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation again, even this year. And I will. And I will be here on Sunday morning and we will light a candle with our family that is just bright enough to remind us that something else in this world is coming and has come, and that somehow the candle does fight the gloom, and that sometimes difficult emotions of the season are soothed by the promise of God breaking into the world and into my life and into your life again. So I'm going to read my Bible and I'm going to do my devo devotions, and on Wednesday nights we'll gather for Holden Vespers, our evening prayer, and we'll be practicing a different sort of singing this season. And we will practice lighting a candle, a candle just bright enough to remind us that something else is coming into the world. So let's always remain awake, awake to Christ's presence among us. Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please pray with me. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. We pray, dear God, for the ministry we share in Christ's name. Open our hearts to your call for justice, peace, and healing. Attune us to the needs of the world as you draw near. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this planet in need of restoration, for devastated habitats, polluted waters, thawing ice, blazing fires, swelling floods, and long-lasting droughts. Renew the face of the earth and our relationship to it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all people who care for others in our community and around the world. Fill them with compassion and the power to respond with justice for those who are oppressed, with welcome for those who are excluded, and with relief for those who suffer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for people who are in crisis as the seasons change, for those without homes facing severe weather, for those who are unemployed or underemployed, and for those in poverty or facing food insecurity. Relieve their burdens, sustain their bodies, and ease their minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for people in our families and congregations who live with depression, anxiety, chronic pain, addiction, and other invisible illnesses. Ease their suffering and support them when they might struggle. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the lives and witness of those who died while waiting for justice, peace, or healing. Those whose names we know and those who are known only to you. Sustain all who still yearn for the completion of your redeeming work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we may offer that through these gifts, the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long expected savior, fill you with love. The unexpected spirit, guide your journey, now and forever. Amen. Now go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.